What's going on guys? Hope everyone is practicing safe quarantining techniques. This episode of the H panel, I will have my friend Riley Baudouet on. We both did a men's mental health panel at Guelph recently. Um, and then he's gonna come on and talk about, you know, uh, mindfulness and the acceptance of one's feelings. So it'll be a really good episode and I hope you guys enjoy it. So here is episode three of the H panel. So what's going on, everyone? I'm Harry Potvin, and welcome back for another episode of the H Panel, uh, the show where we bring on guests from all different backgrounds to talk mental health. Today, I have the pleasure of being joined by Riley Bodway. Uh, he is a student at the University of Guelph, where he's studying psychology, and is both a member of the Mental Wellbeing Committee and a founder of the Meditation Club. Him and I were also both members of Guelph's first ever men men's only mental health panel. Riley, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, no problem, man. My, my pleasure. Before we get too into it, uh, why don't you just give us a little background about yourself? So, um, like you said, we did this panel that was, I can't remember when that was, but that was uh, a guys only mental health panel. And I've had, um, recently I've been involved with a lot of mental health stuff, but it started, I guess, if I go into it really quick, just give you a background. Like, back in the day, in high school, I was a super super shy kid. I didn't really talk to many people. I was bullied a little bit too. And I had, you know, nothing crazy that no one else dealt with, but it was just, I guess I had a predisposition to it and, um, the way I dealt with it. But after a while, it started getting worse and worse. And I guess the last, the last year of my, of high school, I did two, two years at the end, but the last, the last year I started getting very depressed. At the beginning, I didn't know what it was because I had a lot of physical symptoms too. So I was going to my doctor. I was getting every type of treatment you could possibly think of, seeing like all types of specialists and stuff, and no one knows what's going on. And that can happen. Like that's 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 common, especially with young people as well. Mm -hmm. That was a struggle for like eight months. I, eight months, I didn't know what was going on with me, but I couldn't get out of bed. I didn't want to see my friends. I completely lost all interest in everything. I guess after a while, I wasn't in school too, but after a while, it kind of just. It got to a point where I, I remember one day, like, it was just so bad. I'm like, okay, there's got to be something I can do to go up from here. Because I just felt like I'm like, okay, like I hit rock bottom today. Yeah. And then I kind of started started this journey that I guess everyone is kind of going through and working through. And it's it's never ending. I started learning a little bit about what I could do. I, try, I mean, I tried tons of other things as well. I had therapy as well and uh, medication. But I started learning a little bit about um, meditation and different types of um, treatments that I could do for myself. And I started feeling slowly a little bit better and slowly getting a handle on it. And after, I don't know, about two years, I start, I, I could say that I've, I wasn't gone, but I could really get a handle on it. And I was actually feeling better about myself. Yeah, and then I started, I, through that, I developed an interest in psychology. And I'm like, you know what, let me study this too, because I've kind of been through it. Well, I've not been through, but I've had that experience, and maybe mm -hmm. I can use that to uh, help someone else down the road. Because I think it's helpful if you've been through it to understand uh, where someone else is coming from. Again, everyone has totally different experiences, but I think that can be helpful. That's a little bit of a background, just so you know where I'm coming from. I've been recently uh, pretty good, and I was thought I was doing really well. And actually, what I wanted to talk a little bit about today is I recently did a. Um, a co-op term in Germany. My, my mom's German, and uh, I can never speak German, but I'm like, you know what, why don't I do this in Germany and I can learn the language, this would be kind of cool. Yeah. I was like, super excited, I'm like, this would be super cool, and everyone was telling me, alright, you're going to have so much fun, and it was fun, but it, at the beginning, it wasn't exactly easy, and it wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be, and it taught me a, little, a, a lot of things. We can get into that. Perfect. Just going a little back into your story, um, I thought it was interesting when you said like you wanted to get into it so you could show people that um, they're not alone and you want to help people. I feel like, you know, therapists are good and everything and professionals are really good, but it's a whole different level when people our age like come out with stories yeah. and stuff and talk about their struggles. It's great to have a therapist and everything, but they're usually older and I guess some, like my first day in therapy, I was like, this guy's so old. What's he going to do for me? Like he doesn't yeah. get it. So when people our age like come out with stories and stuff, it's def it definitely makes a way bigger difference for sure. That's huge too. Like I, I remember my therapist was okay, but I remember feeling like it just didn't feel real to me. Like it felt like she was there, she was doing her job for like an hour and then she's going to go home and, uh, 
Like it wasn't like we actually had a connection. It didn't feel real to me like she was actually. And I'm sure she actually did care, but it's something different when it's someone your age, like you said, or one of your buddies or one of your friends. And uh, that's why I'm super stoked that you're doing this because I find it's awesome. So now that we kind of got a little background on yourself, um, (laughs) I know we broadly discussed the topics that you were going to mention today. Uh, And the first one was the importance of being honest with yourself and others. Um, Yeah. Yeah, that's huge. I guess I can go back a little bit too. The last few years, or the last year in particular, I was actually doing, I was doing really well. I had a lot of support. I had some good friends that were having my back. I could had people to talk to. I was in a place, like, we're both in Guelph. It's, I love that place too. It's mm-hmm. a really cool place to be. And I was having tons of fun meeting lots of people, and it was, I was feeling good. Maybe that gave me this idea that, okay, now I'm past this, and now I'm... Uh, um, I'm not going to have to deal with this again. And like I was saying, I'm going to Germany. I was like, tell me, oh, this is going to be so awesome for you. You're going to have a great time. So I already had this idea in my head. Oh, I'm going to have this great time and I better have a great time. Mm-hmm. Cause like, this is something that I got to live and I got to come back and tell all these people like, Oh, there's all the crazy stuff that I did. And look, like, listen, to all this. And so I already had this like expectation. And when I got there, I mean, I have lots of family in Germany. But um, first of all, I can speak some German. Now I can speak way better. But at the beginning, like, there was always this border. And I felt like I just couldn't be myself. I couldn't express to people. I couldn't relate to people because, like, like I can't tell jokes. I can't uh, – it's hard to go and meet people. Mm -hmm. As time went on, like, it's easier. But at the beginning, like, there was times where I felt – and it wasn't always like this. It kind of went up and down. But there was times where I felt – like I did back in high school. And I haven't felt like that in a long, long time. Part of that was the job, too. Um, people there were great, but the setup, it wasn't a job that works well for me. Complete office job, and I need to like okay. be out and talk, be talking to people and stuff. Right. So I was a little bit upset about that, too, because the job wasn't exactly what I imagined. I remember feeling just completely alone, just because, you know, everyone back home, like, oh, I don't want to bug anyone back home. Because I had this idea in my head that like I don't I don't want to tell them anything unless like I'm like telling them how good I'm how good of a time I'm having. Like, right. I was really I was really struggling to be honest and be like you know what I am actually not feeling good because I I had this thought in my head like oh Riley you're past this like you're this like cool guy now you you have lots of friends blah 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 and like to just be thrown into that and be like okay here's a totally new situation you don't have any of the backups that you had there it kind of thrust me back to where I was and I. I had to talk a lot with my parents just to get through that at the beginning. Mm-hmm. I had these techniques now that helped me through it, but I haven't felt like that in a long time. What I mean by being honest is like I was denying it for a long time. Like I don't want people to know that I'm struggling. I want to go back and be able to say like, oh, look at all the good times I had. And um, that was tough mm-hmm. because I, I didn't want to admit that. For the longest time, I was like acting like that wasn't there, like I wasn't feeling like that. And I wasn't telling any of my friends. It's still something I need to work on. I didn't really reach out like I could have. Mm-hmm. So that's what I mean by being honest. We all have like this image of ourselves and we think that's who we are all the time. But you can be in a different place and that could completely change in a second. When you have all these other things stripped away from you, you think this is who you are and you want to hold on to that so bad. You're like, oh, I was doing so well on Guelph back then. Like I was having such a good time. But just like the first thing you can do is being honest because you can't accept where you are without being honest with where you are. Yeah. And that's what everyone says. That's what we all we always talk about. We both talked about that. Like you got to accept it, right? You got to mm-hmm. accept where you are. It's all about acceptance. So that is what I meant with that. So that's what I learned. And then I, you know, once I started talking about it and recognizing that, yeah, okay, I need to do something about this, then I kind of started to get a bit of a handle on it and it started getting better and better as time went on it was still difficult it was a difficult time but that's definitely a lesson i'll take from that not to ever be you know on my high horse my opinion is that people can defeat depression it definitely depends on where you're at also sometimes it can come back without you knowing yeah and that's that's something that i learned because i thought it was past it and mm-hmm. it came back and um that was something that taught me it's something i'm going to keep in mind now to have those things that i had in my life back here to have to, to use those things to talk to my friends to not feel like oh I can't be I can't 
I can't admit that I'm not having a good time because I have to be, I should be having a good time here. Why shouldn't I be having a good time? I'm in a new country. I'm traveling. Everyone's like, oh my God, people are DMing me. Uh, you, oh, it must be so fun there. Yeah, and I'm so like jealous. lying to them. I'm like, yeah, it's amazing. But really, like there's times where I'm just like hating it. Mm-hmm. I'm like just feeling so sad, completely cutting myself off there, right? Instead of like, yeah, you know what? I'm actually not doing it too well right now. And then maybe talking about it. And I do have those friends that I can go to that I didn't use them. So that was a big lesson there. Another thing, like, I, I'm sure you can relate to, like, when, I, when I'm when i not doing well and I need to talk to someone, I don't want to feel like a burden. Yeah. So it's like, they're going, oh, your trip must be awesome. And it's like, actually, no. And then you have to yeah. start ranting, but you feel bad for ranting. And then it's like, I'd rather just not say anything. You're like, oh, they're probably doing something, right? Yeah, it's like, oh, it's a lot easier than that. If you think about it, like... One of your friends or one of my friends, if they reached out to me, I wouldn't feel like that's a burden. No I way. Like people wouldn't, right? No, even if I was doing something, I'd drop it. Yeah. I'd be like, you let's talk. I mean? And that's important too because you, then you know like those are your good friends, right? Those are the people that have your back. Those are the people that you can turn to. And if you know, if you if you can't, then that doesn't say anything about you. I think I said this in my, in my uh, talk too. Um, someone's like, well, what if people don't have time? Well – then you go to the people that do, like maybe that, that doesn't say anything about you. You shouldn't feel bad. It just says that something else is more important for them. They may be struggling too, or they may just not be the right friend for you. That might be something too. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, for sure. Another point going back into your conversation where you were saying like you can beat depression, but it can come back and creep up on you. People often overlook that the brain is a muscle. Yeah. I think they just assume it's like a whole world of yeah. just thoughts up there. So like you have to train it and like work with it yeah. say you've got washboard abs you say you got washboard abs <laughs> no i don't but <laughs> I, I bet you do all that swimming and probably helping you up <laughs> i definitely won't try to prove it here but uh no, no, no. <laughs> not after quarantining um, <laughs> like say say you've got the washboard abs and then you take like six months off and then the fat slowly creeps up again you know like it's the same thing you just got to keep yeah. working at it and i think people don't really realize that going yeah. in that's a huge point man i say that all the time we think like we're this person and it's just who we are for like our whole life we are very delicate and that is not there's no like like i study psychology and yeah i'm only in my in my second year but no one know there's no like area in the brain like this is who you are and this stays there oh yeah like your your brain is affected by how much you sleep what you eat um who you're around, the environment, the air that you breathe. It's like a muscle and it's affected by so many things, right? It's, it's like, it's part of your body. And sometimes we forget that, that mm-hmm. we think there's like this one thing in there that like, okay, yeah, I'm confident. I'm going to be confident all the time. Maybe you didn't sleep for two hours or for, you didn't sleep for two days. You're not going to be the same person. You know yeah. what I mean? So that's huge. Like that's what initially helped me when I learned about meditation and, and mindfulness mindfulness I'm just in case anyone doesn't know just bringing your attention to the present moment you can do that into as a, a meditation or you can do it anytime it's just living more through your senses and paying more attention to like what what you're doing right now in the moment so whatever what you're seeing what you're feeling and just accepting it it's exactly what you said I practiced that and at the beginning it was so hard I was like really struggling because it you have like it's you've been trained a certain way for so long and i was trained to think completely negatively all the time so i'm like where can i do this i was working at the time because i had taken i I'd tried uh college to begin with and at that time i was still not in a good place and i lasted about two months and then i was so depressed that i couldn't like i couldn't be there anymore it's weird because quantitative like quantitatively you look at the situation uh, and you're like, you know what, like I had friends there, I had people talk to, I had a cool experience, but it's like, that doesn't matter. Like it's, it's how you experience it. That's a whole nother topic, but that's an other interesting point. So I went back home and like, okay, um, we'll, we'll do a year and a half off and see if I can get a handle on this thing and then maybe try it again. So I'm like, where can I practice this? So I start practicing like at work. I'm like, okay, let's see if I can just like really pay attention to what I'm doing and not be like just uh, being in a daze throughout the whole day and just being like, oh, I hate everything. I don't want to be here. Blah, 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 blah. Life sucks. Just trying to really focus on 
everything I was doing at each moment. It's very difficult, but like I practiced at work. I found it was very context dependent too. Like I practiced at work and then I get a handle on that. And it's after a while, okay, I'm becoming more present, more aware of what I'm doing and less thinking about bullshit all the time. And then I started feeling better there. And then I'm like, okay, see if I can bring this to other areas of my life. So I started pre- practicing at home because even at home, I didn't feel comfortable either. Mm-hmm. I was still not really seeing many people. They're like, Friend-wise, I wasn't going out or partying. I wasn't hanging out with people. I think someone like forced me to come out or something. I, I don't know what happened because uh, I wasn't talking to anyone um, at the time. And it's completely wrong, but at the time, I didn't feel like I was worthy to see anyone because I'm like, no one wants to see me in this state. No one wants to hang out with me when I'm uh, like this all the time. Like, you know, like the worthless feeling. It's one of the... Right. One of the main symptoms of depression. So I didn't feel worthy to do something like that. But I think someone just pulled me out. They're like, you, you got to come. Super grateful for that. I don't even know what happened there. But I went to this one party. And his friends that I had had kind of leading up to where that depression started. But I had stopped seeing. I had a great time because I just felt like accepted by everyone. And I'm like, I'm kind of getting on a tangent here. But I was started. I started... I, that gave me like a little bit of inspiration too. I'm like, okay, maybe I can get a handle on this too in social situations because I had com- I, I had depression too, but I had complete social anxiety as well. Mm-hmm. Like I, I did not feel comfortable whatsoever. Uh, but that night I felt comfortable. I'm like, you know what, maybe I can do this too. And then I started working and building on each other and then all other areas started improving and that was kind of like the basis of it. That's why I say that's only my experience, right? I can't say that's going to work for everyone. It is looking pretty good. They're doing a lot of – it's a huge topic now, mindfulness. It's like everyone's talking about it. It's, okay. um, it's already a, a treatment. If you go to therapy, they can, they can use that as well. Mm-hmm. But that's was incredibly helpful for me. And I just it kept building and building. And then after a while, I started feeling better. And that was, that was huge. Like I said, maybe there's still that predisposition that I have that I have to be aware of, right? And I have to be aware of, yeah, it's something you have to be on top of. It's not something you can just let go. And like you said, it's it's training. If I just completely let go, then, um, you know, I may fall back into it again, right? Do you personally have any exercises for mindfulness that maybe the viewers could find useful? Because I've had my fair share of like panic attacks and like thinking super negatively. Yeah. I, yeah. But the way like there's exercises you can do where it's like, um, yeah. I don't know the exact name for it, but it's like I see five different things. I smell right. yeah, five yeah, different yeah. things. So that's a that's a really good one. And that's just for generally bringing yourself into the moment. The ones that I find are the most important senses are seeing, hearing, and feeling. And we don't think about that much about what we're tasting and smelling that much. So I, the other ones I think take up a bigger part of our awareness. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's all you do. So three, five, whatever number you want to say, five things that you can be aware of right now. So I would say five things that you can see, maybe things that you wouldn't normally look at too. Mm -hmm. Just realizing where you are and pointing out five things. And then trying to focus your attention on that just for like 20 seconds or so. And then move to the next one. Five things I can hear. And if it's silent too, that's okay. You can just... Pay attention to the silence. And then five things that you can feel or five different sensations or five different areas or even just feeling your body. This one's huge because with this technique, you have to always come at it from uh, a sense of acceptance. It's not that you're forcing yourself into a certain uh, way of awareness. It's more that you're like, okay, I'm curious to what my present state is. It's not like Okay, I gotta focus right now. Can't think of any thoughts because if you're avoid trying to avoid things, they're gonna come back right. uh, stronger. Like the more you avoid, the more it comes. It has to be kind of like a gentle awareness. That's why I think with feelings, like what you're feeling in your body, that's kind of more, the more difficult one. A lot of times we don't want to feel what we're feeling, especially if it's like right now I'm feeling anxious. Like you want to avoid that. You want to do anything you can do to escape that. That's why it's really important. And this leads me to the next the next technique. I used to have panic attacks as well. I learned this one technique, and it works great for panic attacks, but also just generally. Because mm-hmm. like I said, I feel like the sensations in your body are one of the, the main things that we avoid. Um, so it's it works the exact same way. Because the panic attack is a loop like this. You get really scared, 
and then you start feeling stuff in your body and you start getting scared of those feelings in your body because you feel like you're dying, you feel like your your body's just losing itself and then you get scared of the feelings themselves mm -hmm. which that perpetuate those feelings even more and then you get scared of that and then you get more feelings and you get scared of that. So you have to somewhere like break that. To do that, you have to look at those feelings and close your eyes, open your eyes, whatever you want, but go into where that sensation is and go as deep as you can into it and just look at it, face it, feel it as closely as you can and say, I accept you feeling. You're okay to be where you are. You're okay to be how you are and just be with it and try and look at it from a purely objective perspective. And sometimes it helps to name it because we can be, or to name it objectively because we can look at a feeling that, like, okay, this feels bad. This feels like nervousness. This feels like anxiety. But instead, think of it in terms of it objectively. So does it feel like a tingling sensation? Where is it exactly? How big is it? And then you start, stop thinking, okay, I'm scared of this feeling. Now you're just observing it and it becomes less scary. And then you can kind of start feeling it. And because you're paying attention to that, you're not paying attention to your thoughts, and you're also stopping the, the cycle of being scared of that. You can use that for panic attacks, but I find that's also super helpful for anxiety in general, because a lot, I feel like a big part of the anxiety is that you get this nervous, restless feeling inside of you, and then you want to just escape it. I'll use an example, social anxiety in, uh, in Guelph, my first year, or Actually, I can't. I used to come to Guelph to, uh, to hang out with people before I went there. I'd go to like Palace of Trappers, and I'd be <laughs> in there, and I'd see so many people, and I'm just like, I'm like, I can't be here. And you just have all these feelings. Go in there with the intention, like, I want to have a good time, but you just have these feelings, and they just start bubbling up inside you, and yeah. you're like, I need to get out of here. And there's like so many times where I just ran out of there with like not even talking to anyone. Luckily, I had a, a, my best buddy. He'd come out with me and sit me down and like talk to me. Be like, how you doing, bro? bro like, we can go back. I don't have to watch this, but he's cool, right? Anyways, um, but it's it's the feeling that starts inside you, and you just like want to do anything to get rid of that feeling and get a run away from it, right? Yeah, that's why I feel like this technique is super helpful. Just taking a second and be like, okay, go into that feeling and allowing it to be there. You know, it's all a process. It takes time. It's not like I went from one day not being able to go in there and then one day having a great time. It's hard for people to understand that. People that haven't experienced um, something like that, I say that gently because there's so many people that have experienced something like that that we don't know about. This is like where you should be having fun and you're freaking out about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it's, 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 uh, some people have a hard time understanding that. On top of that, it goes back to my other points. Like, I should be having fun. Why am I not having fun? It's like my thing in Germany. Anything to like deny the way I'm feeling mm -hmm. instead of yeah, I feel like shit. Let's start from there. Okay, I accept it. I'm not having a good time. What can I do about it? Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And like accepting the feelings, even if, it, like you said, even if it's not panic attacks or anything like that, even if it's just simply negative thoughts in general, I yeah. find that when I was like at my most negative and I kind of either denied it or refused to accept it, the thought seemed that much bigger and that much more intimidating. Once I like realized, okay, this is how I'm feeling and I addressed it, it didn't yeah. seem as bad in a way, yeah. if that makes sense. Definitely. First step is like, it's okay to feel this way. Yeah. And that's like the technique. Like you have to, it has to come from a place of acceptance. Like anything that you're avoiding, you're going to get more of it. That's kind of like a general rule that I found. It's not until you let it be there that it can actually run its course. Yeah and come out of you and that's like the other thing too right that you mentioned like it's a process i feel like with social media and everything and uh like just seeing the end result for everything you kind yeah. of forget that there is such a long process to get to the point where these people are showing off i remember when i first started like going to therapy and stuff i was like how long is this going to take and she was like i could not tell you originally i had thought oh i'm going to go once and it's going to be fine Right. Like, yeah. I'll be right back to normal. And then after hearing that, that <laughs> yeah, it's not, that's not how it works. So that's definitely another point that I want the viewers to get is like, it, it is a process and it is something you have to continuously work at. Uh, yeah. You're not going to get results in one day. Like that's not, it's unrealistic to think like that. And that's a huge point. But the only thing you can do is like, it's, I think it's better to think, I always try and think, what can I do 
right now, like yeah. right at this moment. There's a lot of times, and it's it makes absolutely no sense, where I'll be like feeling pretty shitty, and I'll be like, oh, let's wait. Like when I get home, then I'll be able to like meditate, and then I'll finally feel yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes no sense. Then you're literally just saying, like, I hate the way I'm feeling right now. Instead of, like, what can I literally do right now? If you're always pushing into the future, then that future never comes. It's the, it's the uh, thing that we just said. You're training. It, and you can train you can train calmness. You can train a bit of happiness. But you can also train yourself to think that it will only come in the future. And that's a, that's a habit that I have to catch myself in sometimes. Seeing people that are having a good time and showing off or whatever, right? I bet you've t- probably talked about it on the channel already. You don't know how these people are doing, right? Like, um, it's not that I'm bragging, but a lot of people were like, oh, Riley, you're probably having like, the best time. You're like, I'm so jealous. And I'm like, I'm posting pictures, posting stories. But that doesn't mean I'm feeling good, right? Like, sometimes sometimes you're just doing that because you're feeling bad. You're like, I need someone to just tell me that I'm having a good time. But yeah. actually, that's just a quick fix sometimes that it doesn't actually address the root problem. You look at it from the other side, um, it's so easy to look at everyone's life on Instagram and be like, oh my God, oh, what am, yeah. why am I not doing what they're doing? A million people have talked about this, but it's just a point that is so important. It's like, it does not show how they're actually feeling. It's not that you should feel good that other people are feeling bad. It's just that you shouldn't feel like you, there's something wrong with you and you're the only one that feels like this. And everyone else is like, oh, look, they got together. Like they're feeling so great. They're, having, they're living their lives. They're in Germany, blah, blah, blah. You don't right. know, right? Everyone's human still. I mentioned it in, I think, my first episode. Like, social media only shows highlights. It doesn't show any, like, behind-the-scenes stuff. It doesn't show, like, what it took for the person to get there if they're actually feeling really good. Like, it only yeah. shows highlights. And if you're only comparing yourself to highlights, like, how are you ever going to be satisfied with anything? That's true. So I was talking about when I was in Germany struggling to meet people. That was another thing, too. I didn't want to admit to the people that I was just meeting that I'm uh, a little bit nervous or I'm not feeling the best. You want to uh, try to, you know, to portray yourself in a good way when you're meeting new people and like so that, you know, um, you can integrate into their friend group and stuff. I felt like I couldn't be myself in the beginning. That was a huge thing too because I didn't have these friends that I could be like, okay, I can be totally open with you and be like, this is how I'm feeling. I didn't feel that comfort yet. I didn't have, like, I wasn't being authentic with who, how I was actually feeling, and I was always trying to present this, like, confident person, even though I was, like, not feeling good inside, and I was feeling nervous. Again, I'm still, like, thinking, oh, I have to be this person. Like, this is this is who I am. Instead of being, like, okay with it, and just, okay, let's say I, I go out, and I, I try and do what I feel like doing. And if I don't feel like talking so much and, and being, like, super loud and like, extroverted, then that's okay too. Yeah. And if I don't feel like that, uh, because I get caught up in that so much, it's something I'm working on. Um, because I can do that sometimes. Like I'm feeling really good. Like I want to meet people, talk to them, but then I get stuck in this. Like this is who you have to be. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I, I think I'm still an introvert at heart, even though I can take it pretty good. Sometimes, sometimes I'm like, I'm overthinking everything, and I'm, I'm I'm actually feeling pretty bad, but I still feel like I should present this person. If I feel like saying something, I'll say something, and when I feel like talking, I'll talk. And it's okay to not look like the most confident person there. And it's just allowing that to be okay, and allowing yourself to feel the way that you are feeling. Riley, once again, thank you so much for coming on to this episode of the H Panel. I really appreciate it. For sure, man. It's fun. The only thing left to do is kind of a shameless plug uh, at the end of my episode. So if you got anything going on in your life, feel free to announce <laughs> it right now. Definitely not plugging my Instagram after all that stuff that I said there. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I do have a YouTube channel that I used to make. I have like three videos on there. But now we have this corona uh, shit. I'm thinking of videos too. You kind of inspired me a little bit. Nice. So name straight up Riley Bodeway. And we're going to post a video on us too, talking about uh, your channel a bit and how you came to that idea. So that should be good too. Yeah, for sure. So that's, uh, that's just straight my name. That's okay. all, the only thing I'm going to plug. I go a little bit more in depth into my story on that too. I mean, I have probably a little bit different opinion now, like it was quite a while ago, but it I still may be helpful. Yeah, for sure. Riley, once Sweet. again, thank you for joining me. Um, no problem. Yeah, stay safe out there. Yeah, you too, <laughs> That's all I got. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on the yeah. H panel. 
what's going on YouTube. Just wanted to say again, thank you so much for watching this episode of the H Panel. Big shout out to Riley for coming on and discussing, you know, his journey with mental health. I'll definitely put his YouTube in the description below. The only thing I ask of you guys, my goal is 100 subscribers. I really don't like asking for stuff, but if you can just spread this video around, give it a like and a subscribe, that would mean the absolute world to me. Thank you so much for your constant support. I really appreciate all of that. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.